Hi everyone, Dr. Victoria Skirbo here, speaking to you for the, from the Seeds of Transformation Healing Center in Wareham, Massachusetts. As I promised, I'm going to do a astrology evaluation on Tulsi Gabbard. I've done these before on her. I've also done her numerology and her Kabbalah, and I've also looked at her chart in relation to the chart of the United States. If you want to check those out, you can look below. I'll put the links to those. Um, I'm doing this because uh, she has a fascinating chart and there are a lot of things happening right now and I think it's important that we look at what's happening with her as it relates to her chart and what's happened in the past with her as it relates to her chart. She's a very significant uh, player in the transformation of America. Um, she has her moon and her north node conjunct the north node of the United States. And so she is connected very deeply and... and um, deeply to the United States. It's karmic. It is, it, but it's karmic about the future. Of course, her south node is conjunct south node of the United States, so it's karmic about the past as well. But there's something for us in America to learn from Tulsi, and there's something for Tulsi to learn. It's all part of our evolution together. Now, generally, I keep the comments open on these things because I like discussion. I like people to bandy about ideas, but because of the last time I did a reading on Tulsi, especially... Uh, it was a Tulsi sort of Hillary Clinton combination reading, reading I guess, and uh, and I got a lot of blowback. So I, I don't really want to do that. I don't want to go through that again. Um, but I am interested if there are astrologers out, out there, what they think of of uh, my, you know, what I'm saying and and their own experience with these with these aspects. Um, astrology is a is a is an art and somewhat of a science, I guess. Um, where we, we evaluate through observation and correlation. So we observe what's happening, and then we correlate it to what's happening or what we see in the chart. And that's how you learn with astrology. Every reading that you do, every person that you do, you're learning more and more and more. So it's an onion that just keeps getting peeled off. Okay. Now, this is Tulsi's chart. We've seen Tulsi's chart before. Um, Telshi has a, a, a kite in her chart. Many of the uh, candidates have kites in their chart. Kite is a very powerful aspect. It's made up of a grand trine and uh, a third point, which creates this part of the kite, the top part of the kite here, making a sextile to two points and making a an opposition to another point in the uh, in the grand trine. Grand trines are very powerful. There's a lot of power in them. But they can um, sort of sit in the background and and never get activated unless there's that third point that's activating them. And so when somebody has that third point activating them, this is somebody who gets a lot done. Okay, they 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 there's a lot of energy for whatever it is that Grand Trine um, is sort of fomenting. Okay, now she has a Grand Trine of fire. Fire is spiritual. Fire is transformational. Okay. Fire can burn you. Fire can warm you. Her grand trine is made up of her sun, her Mars, and her Venus, all in Aries. Trine Vesta, what she devotes herself to in Leo, and Neptune in Sagittarius up here. Let's talk about this trine. Um, First of all, she has a lot of Aries energy. She has her sun, her Mars, her Venus in Aries. She also has Mercury in Aries up here in the 12th house. And she has an Aries ascendant. Your ascendant, uh, the ruler of the ascendant is the ruler of the chart. And so the ruler of her whole chart is uh, her Mars in Aries in the first house. And so it's Aries, 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 Aries. One of the things about Aries is Aries is a pioneer. Aries is the one who's willing to sort of jump, jump in. Um, they tend to be very courageous, but they can also be very foolhardy. So they sort of jump into these things that perhaps are too big for their capacity or their capabilities. Aries is the first sign of the zodiac. Okay. Um, however, a spiritualized Aries can be one of the greatest assets that we have. Okay. An unspiritualized Aries can be a brute. Okay. Um, she is not a brute. She is spiritualized. I believe she, she is, uh, um, I believe that she is individuated and that means that she is breaking free from, um, the herd. 
Whether she is spirituated, I don't know. That will we will see that as as she as she does her her earthly work. Um, and not everybody un- maybe understands what I'm talking about, but the evolutionary astrologers out there probably uh, should. Okay. Um, okay. So here we have Tulsi. Now um, she has all this Aries energy. Who she is, the sun, her identity, Mars, her actions, and Venus, her values. Uh, trine, Neptune, in Sagittarius. Neptune is the planet of spirituality. Not religion necessarily, but spirituality. It's our idealism. We're very idealist. Neptune can be very idealistic, uh, very inspired, but it can also be deluded. And having in Sagittarius the, the sign associated with truth, we can be deluded thinking that we know the truth. Um, we also can be inspired by the truth. So one of the things about astrology is you're reading energy. It's the person's choice, the free will of the individual, how they're going to utilize their chart. Um, and then we have down here, we have Vesta in Leo. Now, Vesta is a uh, asteroid and it's what we devote ourselves to. Okay. And Leo is the heart. And so she would need to devote herself to uh, what is in her heart. And she has Vesta um, in Leo in the fifth house. So she could be investing, uh, devoting herself to her own ego. <laughs> okay, so there's that possibility. This is somebody who has a very, very healthy ego. <laughs> okay. Now, the third point, the thing that activates this, this grand trine is Pluto. Pluto, the planet of transformation. She has an almost exact opposition between Pluto and her son. Whenever you have aspects to Pluto, the planets aspecting Pluto go through transformational process through the life. So if you in your chart have uh, Pluto in an aspect to your sun, your identity goes through a transformation. Your Venus, your values, your Mars, your actions, your Jupiter, your beliefs, your Saturn, the structure of your life. Um, the moon, your emotions. Okay. So, so Pluto changes everything that it touches, but Pluto as the expression of the soul. Okay. Um, is, has a dual desire nature for things to stay the same and for things to evolve in the opposite direction. Pluto evolves through its polarity point. The polarity point of Pluto in Libra is Aries and she has her sun there. She has her Mars there and she has her Venus there. Pluto opposite those three planets, Plu uh, oppositions in general create opposition and they create a sense of, they can create projection. Um, they can see the enemy outside of themselves uh, when it's actually within. Um, there's a reflection. And so people with these powerful oppositions, especially to Pluto, will reflect back to us that which we believe about ourselves, judge about ourselves. Um, she acts like a mirror, really. Okay. This is not an easy lifetime. This is, this is somebody who has picked a very challenging thing to do. Now, um, there can be issues with ego, but Pluto expresses itself, um, uh, through the other planets and they're expressing herself through who she is, what she does, and what she believes, or, or what's a value to her, I should say, because it's it's a belief is a little something different. Uh, but what what she values, so so you're going to know upfront what's important to her. She's also going to be very brave to put it out there and say it, and put her in a way life on the line, the sun. The opposition between Pluto and um, her sun and her Mars have a Virgo quality to it. Uh, her opposition to her Venus has a Libra quality to it. And so her, who she is and her actions require adjustments in this lifetime, but her values, what, what she believes to be true is true to what her soul, uh, believes what, uh, her values that, that Venus in, uh, Aries, she is a warrior and Eris, uh, the goddess of discord, 
um, is right about conjunct her Venus. Okay. So she is throwing the apple of discord <laughs> into the wedding. Um, and Paris is picking the fairest of the goddesses. And uh, I think that was part of the sort of archetypical stuff that was happening or that's happening with her and Hillary at this time. Um, so that's very interesting. Um, let's look at the grand trine. So this is somebody who is devoted to what's in her heart. She believes she knows what the truth is. Okay. Does she? Possibly. Okay. Uh, she could be inspired by the truth or she can think she knows it all. Okay. One of the reasons why people have such an issue with her, this is somebody you either love or hate. I guess it kind of depends on you. Um, but this is a very powerful soul. Now, uh, she has a couple of other things in her chart um, that we need to look at. Uh, let's look at the nodes of her moon. She has her south node up here in the 10th house in Aquarius. Um, I guess she was part of a religious order or cult. People call it a cult. I don't know. I haven't done the research on it, so I, I, I can't say that I would call it that. Uh, but, this, but the south node is often uh, your, your years before your first Saturn return. So you're pretty much sitting in your south node until you're about 27, 28, 29 years old. Okay. Um, and then after that, you move into your north node. So uh, south node in Aquarius, she's used to being part of a group. Um, the whole Aquarian ideals are important to her fairness, everybody's equal, uh, you know, together we stand, sort of divided we fall kind of energy. Um, but Aquarius is also a trauma signature. And so she has been traumatized through her youth because of her associations. And because it's in the 10th house, there's this energy of maybe sort of a little bit of like a power over. Like there was like who who had the power of to sort of wield over the group. It's also the house of father. So her father would be a very important influence in her life, but it is about her. That is about her past. That's where she's coming from. Her North node is down here in the fourth house in Leo conjunct her moon. And so her heart and her feelings and her emotions are into the future. They're about the future and they're about they're about, um, it's in the fourth house, it's about home. So this is somebody who loves her country, loves her home. Okay. Uh, she does have Chiron square the nodes, but it's a wide square. There is her Chiron. I'm looking at this backwards, so I apologize for that. She has Chiron and Taurus. Chiron and Taurus is trauma due to uh, a lack of self-worth. Uh, could be trauma, um, could be starvation. It could be getting your land taken away from you. Uh, she definitely has trauma signatures in her chart. And her whole process of going into the army and experiencing what she experienced was traumatizing as well. Um, one of the things about Aries and many of the uh, fire signs especially um, is that they learn through their experience. They learn through experience. And so their experiences change them. So they don't stay, they're not like just because they were one way at one point doesn't mean that they don't transform. And when you have Pluto opposite your, your sun, you, you can't help but transform. And when you have Pluto opposite your Mars, you can't help but transform what you do. And, you, and when you have it opposite your Venus, you can't help but transform what you believe, what, what is of value to you. Okay. She also has a couple of other oppositions. It's a lot of oppositions in her chart, and so she gets opposed a lot. But she has a lot of bravery and perhaps foolhardiness because of the Aries energy. Not everybody would do what she's doing. Not everyone is maybe brave enough or foolhardy enough to do it. She has an opposition between her Mercury and Saturn. And uh, so her Mercury is up here in the 12th house. It's in Aries, um, but it's in the 12th house, so it's hidden. Your Mercury is how you think, what you're thinking, right? How you think, where do you, where do you come up with these ideas? Um, in the 12th house, she could be inspired through spirit. Um, she could be inspired by hidden enemies. She can be manipulated in that way. It's possible. Uh, opposite her Saturn and her Jupiter, 
Okay. And so this opposition, sometimes she says too much and sometimes she says too little. Her challenge in this lifetime, uh, numerologically, uh, her, her shadow vibration is associated with Jupiter uh, and it's associated with her throat chakra. And so her healing place is in her throat, finding her true voice, finding her true voice, being able to say no when she needs to say no um, and not taking on too much. <laughs> so she's taking on a lot. She also has a very tight opposition between Uranus and um, Pallas Athena. Pallas Athena is the, is the asteroid associated with social justice. And of course, Uranus is the rebel. When you have a, uh, this is another trauma signature for her, uh, the ruling planet of her south node is Uranus in Scorpio in the eighth house. That's trip. That's trauma. Okay. That's trauma. Um, coming up against forces greater than self. Um, somebody, um, you know, not being able to fight somebody off. Okay. There's all kinds of stuff with that. Could have cost her a life in a past life. Okay. So this is, this is a, a, this is a very driven person. Um, and it's hard to know her intention. I think she reflects our intentions. So, and of course she points out people's intentions. She sees, she sees people for who they are and she'll let you know who you are. Okay. I want to say anything else about, about Tulsi when it comes to this. All right, let's leave that. Now I want to look at some of the things that have been going on in her life. Um, to see what drives this woman, because I think her motivations are questioned. And so let's see. Uh, and I don't know everything about her life. I just know a couple of different things that uh, important points in her life. 9-11 was very important in her life. It, it sort of steered her in the direction of her destiny in a way, uh, or at least the first step of her destiny. And I do have that here. Let me grab this. So Tulsi was 20 on 9-11. Was she 20? Yeah, she was 20. Um, and this and 9-11, she decided to go into the into the armed service, okay, to become a soldier. Of course, she's an Aries, it's a natural fit, but something propelled her, and it was 9-11. So if we look at her chart, her chart is here, and this is the 9-11 chart. And there's a couple of things. First of all, Neptune the planet of idealism, uh, of lies, <laughs> of spirituality was conjunct her south node. So she was inspired to, um, 10th house, take a position of, um, a responsible position to help Aquarius, the group. Okay. Um, and we have Neptune here. Um, she believed what was said. She she believed uh, what was being said by those in authority. And uh, she later found out that a lot of it was a big lie. And that it was actually a money making. So this could have, this whole process, 9-11 to, to the present time, uh, is a spiritual crisis for her. Spiritual crisis. Um she also had Chiron, transiting Chiron, conjunct her Neptune. And this is all conjunct something called the galactic center. Okay. When the galactic center is involved, we know that, that there's that sort of otherworldly energy connected. Plus, a lot of her triggers are with the transpersonal planet. So this is transpersonal, spiritual, otherworldly energy coming in, activating her chart. So she does have a lot of connection to things that are beyond the realm of three-dimensional reality, which scares the crap out of people, quite frankly. Okay, so we have uh, Chiron here on her on her Neptune. Now, we remember that Neptune is part of that uh that kite formation. So not only is her kite with Pluto and the sun and Venus and Mars and Neptune and, and mission oriented Vesta gets activated, uh, by Chiron, the wound, the wound from abroad, uh, uh, 
I'm sorry. Sagittarius is foreign places. Okay, the foreign threat. Okay, on her, on her, um, on her, Neptune activating her uh, her kite. She also has an activation of her south node. When south node, north node are activated, it's always fateful. It's always a, a fated event. And then the other thing is the nodes of the moon at the time of the 9-11 incident, we had the north node at three degrees some odd minutes of Cancer, the south node three degrees some odd minutes of Capricorn, conjunct Mars in Capricorn, conjunct Ceres in Capricorn, made an exact square to her Jupiter, her Jupiter and a square to her um, Saturn. Um, she has that Saturn uh, Jupiter opposition to her Mercury. Sometimes she says too much and sometimes she says too little. <laughs> uh, activating that Jupiter. Remember, Jupiter is her wound in Kabbalah. It's connected to her shadow in Kabbalah. And so her, her, everything is being activated because of this. So this is a fateful time for her. Now, the next thing I'm going to look at is when she decided to... Um, Resigned from the DNC and uh, back Bernie Sanders. Let's see what was going on at that time. All right. So um, we have the, the asteroid of um, social justice in a tight conjunction to Venus and Aquarius conjuncting her south node. So her sense of social justice and her values around taking care of all people, the sort of Aquarian, um, Aquarian, more Aquarian, humanitarian concerns activated her South Node here. Um, Mars activating her Uranus. Uranus is the rebel, okay, activating her rebelliousness and exactly opposite her palace. She took an action um, to uh, she became aware that she needed to take an action to help those who um, who needed justice. Okay, she saw Bernie Sanders as somebody who was in alignment with these values, and of course, we know that's true. At the same time, Uranus was sitting just just before was just about to cross her ascendant. This is a once in a lifetime event. When Uranus crosses your ascendant, it moves into the first house. It changes the way that you're seen. It actually changes your identity and how you identify yourself. And so she she moved into the and and uh, it's a rebellious right, um, and it has to do with sort of initiating something new. At the same time, Pluto was just about ready. It was in, uh, looks like, uh, 30, 30 minutes of going over into her 10th house. Pluto up there at the top of the chart, transforming the way the world sees her. Uh, uh, a it's, 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 it's a power play, but not necessarily a conscious power play. It has more to do with this was her time to make her move. Okay. So we can see that. Oh, and... Um, Vesta, which was actually activating her, her, um, oh my goodness, her kite, um, is conjunct her Venus. Vesta is in Aries, what she's devoting herself to. She's devoting herself to the new way, to the new world, to the new world. I don't want to call it order because, because Bush said that, but the vision that Bernie Sanders had, right? a government for and by the people. She says it all the time. This is what she believes. And it's seen in this chart. Now, if she was such a Bernie supporter, why did she decide to run for president? Wouldn't that take away from Bernie? What was it that, that drove her? Well, I watched an interview, and this is something I did not know about her, but she decided um, to go into the presidential election after the false missile alert in Hawaii. Okay. That happened on January 13th, 
2018, a month, two weeks later, and because it's Tulsi, she did it like, sided like this. Two weeks later, she was announcing her vie for president, for the, for the nomination for the Democratic Party. And we'll say, well, what happens with that? Was there something like, you know, a lot of people went through that experience. No, but she's the only one who decided she wanted to be president. You have to remember people, Aries are direct and they like to take things into their own hands because they feel like they can do it. They're, they have confidence. Okay. Um, so let's look at that. This, this is very telling. First of all, um, Pluto had just moved over into the 10th house. So that's very powerful. Pluto moves into your 10th house. You feel like you can, you can take on the world. And so she does, right? Um, what else is going on here? Vesta. Now remember Vesta is very important. Vesta is what you devote yourself to. Um, Vesta, I believe, is also connected to the military because of the devotion it takes to be in the military, devotion to service to others. Uh, Vesta made a conjunction to her Uranus. So this is her mission. Okay. This is her mission. Um, the ascendant of the incident, exactly when it happened, the ascendant is conjunct her south node, uh, which says to me that this both activated her woundedness uh, but also was a faded time for her. This was a faded experience for her. This sort of pushed her into something that she wasn't really intending on doing. She was just going to do what she was doing. She was probably going to, you know, stump for Bernie. And then this happened. And she said, uh-oh, I have to go into action because that's the type of person that she is. Uranus here and now in her first house, fully in her first house, conjunct her Venus, what's important to her and what she values. Now, of all the things opposite her Pluto, Venus is the only one that is in a, what we call a full phase opposition. Both her Mars and her, and her uh, son are in gibbous phase. So who she is, her identity and how she acts still need to go through adjustments. They still need to go through the process of having to make adjustments to herself in order to fully express her, full, her her soul's sort of purpose. But Venus is in full phase. And so what's important to her is right out there. Okay, this is what I value. And we have Uranus activating that. Not to mention that Eris, the goddess of discord, is conjunct her Venus and her Uranus at this time. And so this is this is the the Eris rolling in the apple to disrupt the powers that be. Okay, disrupt the powers that be. Another very faded, faded time. Okay, and let me see. I think there was one other thing I wanted to mention. The nodes of her moon. Okay, she was having a nodal return. It wasn't quite there. It was still a couple months away. But she had a series and the north node conjunct her north node and her moon. And so she also had uh, the south node conjunct her south node. She's got the ascendant there. She had um, um, Juno in Aquarius uh, also on the south node. So her nodes got activated. And so what we see in Tulsi's chart is when these things happen, her... her um, her kite gets activated. Vesta is always has is always part of the picture. Uranus is part of the picture. Pluto, uh, all of these transpersonal planets. She has a very very special uh, mission. She has a special mission. What is it? What is it going to look like? I don't know yet. And she neither does she. I mean, she has she thinks she knows, but how it's going to actually manifest itself will have a lot to, excuse me to do with this whole interaction and this whole sort of project projection we're learning and she's learning at the same time i say she's a very brave woman for taking this on a very brave soul for taking this on and then the last thing i want to show you is this 
this is her chart again. And I said before, I said, don't ignore this up here, but now we're not going to ignore it. On the 12th of January, 2020, Pluto and Saturn make a conjunction. Last time they made a conjunction was 1982. Tulsi was a year old, a year and a half old at that time. Um, at that time, the conjunction was in Libra. Interesting. Um, and it would have been in Tulsi's um, seventh house. Um, but now, this many years later, we have another conjunction. Saturn and Pluto is the structure of power. And it is uh, pretty much exactly square her sun, Pluto, Pluto, Mars, and Pluto, Venus opposition. So whether or not she's president, she is going to be here um, to show us something. Um, Pluto and Saturn conjunct in Capricorn really is about taking responsibility. And here's a woman who's willing to take responsibility that most people won't. Here's a woman who is willing to take a leadership position when most people would say, oh no, um, that's crazy. Who's going to do that? I'm not, I, I wanted to share this because I thought it was important to look at her from a, from a broader perspective to get the personality out of it. Um, and as I said, I'm not going to do comments on this because I, I don't want to deluge. Um, but she's on a mission. And she's going to do uh, what she feels she needs to do to, you know, quite frankly, save the world. Now, is that grand? Is that delusional? Is that perhaps? It is. Um, can she do it? I don't know. But she's going to be a part of the great change and the great shift. And so she's going to be around unless, unfortunately, something happens to her. And I hope that that does not happen. Um, but these are pretty challenging aspects that, that she has, and she is going against very, very powerful concerns. But we have to remember that we are in this country going through our Pluto return. And so this is all part of that. Now, I think what I'm going to do, and not today, uh, maybe in a couple of days, I do want to do uh, something on Hillary Clinton because, uh, and there'll be no comments on that. You can bet no comments. Uh, <laughs> Because um, there is a similar, uh, there's a Plutonian energy in both of these these people. Now, now she only has Uranus in um, in Scorpio, but there's so much Pluto in her chart that she is she is uh, Scorpio by proxy, really. Um, and then we have uh, um, Hillary, who's got a load of boatload of Scorpio. Uh, with Pluto and Leo, you know, it's just she is such a powerful chart. But again, she's going to bring up uh, she's going to bring up people's uh, fears, really fears. And so this is what we have. I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, like and subscribe if you want. Um, I just wanted to sort of show you in a way where I was coming from, what I saw in in her, and uh, I am um, for the most part somebody who wants to believe the best in people. And so that's where I come from. Uh, maybe it's a little Pollyanna, Pollyanna ish, but I'd rather be that way than cynical. I'd rather have hope. So I hope you enjoyed this and I'll be back. Um, eventually <laughs> I got to take a break. I think I'm going to go, um, go put my feet up, maybe crack a beer open. Cause this was very intense. This is also the third time I tried to do this, so understand. <laughs> it was intense three times over, but three times a charm, right? As they, as us witches say. Have yourself a great weekend. Um, we have a, a really powerful uh, new moon. Um, two days. No, two days, one day. Is it tomorrow? I should know this. What's today? I think it's Sunday. Well, anyway, just watch my channel because I'll talk about it. Okay, guys. Sorry I'm keeping you this long. Oh, 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 before I go, I want to thank everybody.
for being so lovely to me. And I want you to know if you said something that you feel might have hurt my feelings, um, it's fine. You know, we're all learning this. And, and you probably didn't. Because if you're worried that you hurt my feelings, chances are you didn't. Um, disagreeing with me doesn't hurt my feelings. Um, but getting attacked uh, pisses me off. I don't know if you know this. I live here in Massachusetts, but I'm from New Jersey. <laughs> so, um, you know, as, as gentle and loving as I, as I, as I am, and I am really that person, uh, I'm also a Jersey girl. So, you know, I'm not as, I'm not as tender as, as, as some people may think. Have yourself a great day. Thank you for all your support. I, I, it just, it was so healing for me. Um, and I hope that what I do for you is healing as well. Take care. Bye.